the mole. So particles and the particles we're talking about could be atoms, could be ions, could be molecules. Um, we could be talking about even formula units that are making up some sort of ratio of molecules. Um, but these particles themselves, whatever they are, they are very small. So if we want to be working with these particles, you're going to have to work with a lot of them. They're lots of very, very small. So any amount of them would be a huge amount of them. Avogadro, that handsome devil at the beginning there, he came up with the idea that grouping a certain amount of these particles into a particular group would be helpful in dealing with them in chemistry to work through our chemical reactions, hence the mole. So to understand what the mole is, we can compare it to something we are familiar with. Um, so often we are working with eggs and specifically chicken eggs in this case here. Um, and so let's compare working with eggs to working with particles. So when you're working with eggs, um, you tend not to go to the store and buy a single egg, right? You don't just buy them one at a time. You buy several of them when you go to buy them. When um, we're working with particles, same thing. We're not normally just dealing with a particle. If we're actually like carrying out the reactions, we're going to be dealing with several of those particles at a time. We've decided with eggs that a handy amount to put together and go to the store to buy would be a dozen of them. So we, we tend to package them in, in packages of 12, which we call a dozen. Avogadro decided that these um, particles themselves, they should be also found in a particular group, and that group is called the mole. So a dozen is a manageable amount of eggs based on the size of the eggs and how many you tend to use in any one go. So a dozen is like a, a nice number to, to deal with for a manageable amount of eggs. A mole is a nice manageable amount of particles to have based on the size that they are. So they're much smaller. So a mole is going to be a larger amount than a dozen is. But again, it's a manageable amount that we, we can easily communicate how many we're talking about. So a dozen, as we know, has 12 in it. And again, that works really well for dealing with things like eggs. So we tend to buy eggs in packs of 12 and we call that pack of 12 a dozen. A mole is also a, an amount of things, just like a dozen is. It just happens to be a larger amount of those things. So it's not anything in particular. It's going to be like one particle or another we tend to be using it for. But again, a mole is just an amount of things. Just like a dozen is an amount of things. You could use it for eggs or donuts or muffins or whatever. Um, and a mole, same thing. You could use it for anything. Generally, because it's such a large number, you want to be dealing with small amounts. But again, it can work for atoms or molecules or ions, uh, whatever happens to be. So a dozen is 12. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. I would recommend remembering it to four significant digits. Um, A, that gives you normally enough significant digits to match the precision of molar masses given on the periodic table. So, so four is a good number to have, um, better than three. And 22, 23, that should be easy to remember as well. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 is the amount of things that are in a mole. A dozen is 12. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So a pair of atoms, if you happen to have a pair of atoms, that would be two atoms. A dozen atoms, if you happen to have a dozen atoms, that would be 12 atoms. A mole of atoms, if you happen to have a mole of atoms, would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And we do know it to some more precision, but again, I recommend it to four digits of precision. That should be more than enough, almost always. Um, this can be expressed as 0 0.6022 septillion or 602.2 sextillion. So a dozen cookies is 12 cookies. A mole of cookies is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 cookies. A dozen cars is 12 cars. A mole of cars would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 cars. A dozen aluminum atoms would be 12 aluminum atoms. A mole of aluminum atoms would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 aluminum atoms. Get the idea here? Um, remember that the number is the same. So a mole is just a particular number, just like a dozen is just a particular number. Um, the number is the same, and it depends on what you're measuring with that particular number. Um, but realize that the, the mass would be different. A mole of aluminum atoms, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 aluminum atoms, would be different in, ma different in mass to a mole of cars. 
So mole is a unit, um, and we use it um, after when we're writing, say, like 1.2 moles. We like to save some time in chemistry. So instead of putting M-O-L-E, we drop the E, and then we just call it mole. So just like when we say 1.2 meters, um, we drop and we just keep the M. Um, for moles, we write M-O-L. So three moles we would express as three MOLs. A mole of particles contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles. So if you had a mole of carbon, you'd have 6.0322 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. A mole of water would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Notice that the substance that you're dealing with, they come in different types of particles. If you're talking carbon, you'll be talking about atoms. If you're talking about water, you'll be talking about molecules. Sodium chloride, you'd have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 because this is an ionic compound. We would be talking formula units of those sodium chlorides. So the number of particles in a mole, this particular number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, is referred to as Avogadro's number. It gets the symbol, not to be confused with sodium, of capital N, lowercase, uh, sorry, capital, but subscript A. So that's Avogadro's number. And again, it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles, and it represents how many things are in a mole. So we can use this as a conversion factor by multiplying the thing that we have by this ratio of particles to moles. Now, if we had something in moles and we wanted to convert it to particles, we would put moles on the bottom so we can cancel them out. If we had something in particles, and remember, you probably wouldn't be saying it's in particles. You'd be talking about what it is in particular. For example, water molecules would be a type of particle, or sodium chloride formula units would be a type of particle. So you'd probably not use the word particles, but you would be talking about a particular type of particles. But if you had them, you would put particles on the bottom, and again, using Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So let's try this out with actually doing the math here. So we have 0.5 moles of aluminum. So I'm going to start that as my given. I have 0.5, and it's actually precise enough to say 0.500 moles. And I'm going to put the units as a subscript, sorry, the label um, as a subscript to the unit. So I'm writing moles as my unit, and I'm putting AL as what it is. Because if we have more than one thing, we want to be able to tell them apart. So I'm going to multiply that by the conversion factor that will get rid of moles. So I'm going to put that on the bottom, moles of aluminum. And I'm going to go to atoms because this is aluminum. So it's not coming in a molecule. It's not an ion. It's not a formula unit. It is a metal. So they are neutral atoms. So I have this ratio of moles on the bottom, atoms on top. And I know the numerical relationship because someone just said it. 20 times. Um, so one mole has 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms in it. And so when I go to do this math here, I'm going to get an answer. Um, atoms, or sorry, moles of aluminum, where's right here? Moles of aluminum are going to cancel out, and the units of atoms are going to follow through to atoms of aluminum. So all of that should be done without picking up your calculator. At this point, you should now pick up your calculator and say, okay, what is 0 0.500 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23? And again, that, that's half of that number, right? So I could say this is going to be 3.011 times 10 to the 23. And I want to look at my precision here. I have three sig digs right here, one and the two trailing zeros. So that's in three significant digits. So I'm going to make sure I answer in three significant digits. So I should just say 3.01 times 10 to the 23 atoms of aluminum. Next one here, I'm given 1.8 times 10 to the 24, and this is atoms of sulfur. So atoms, and I'm putting sulfur, I should say atoms, let's make that look more like a subscript. Atoms of sulfur. And I'm going to convert to moles. So I'm going to use a conversion factor. Puts atoms on the bottom of the conversion factor. I'm still doing sulfur here. And moles on the top for sulfur. And then atoms are going to cancel out. And I'm going to get moles of sulfur as my answer. I know that one mole has 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms in it. 
atoms are going to cancel out. So again, all of that should be done before you end up picking up your calculator. Then you're going to pick up your calculator and say, okay, 1.8. And make sure you use the exponent or EEE -E -E button. Um, you're not putting in multiplied by 10. Um, 1.8 EE -E or EXP or whatever the button is on your calculator. Um, and we're looking at 24. And we're dividing that by 6.022. Exponent 23, and we should get, so I'm getting news about three, but let's put it down as, where's blue, 2.989, but then I have to look, okay, well, I'm going in with two, the one and the eight, two significant digits, and so I'm going to have to get rid of this, and it's going to round that off, so I'm cutting it off there, but eight's going to round that up, so I can conclude that we're going to have 3.02 significant digits moles of sulfur. So how big is a mole? How many? That's, that's again, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Easy number to write down scientific notationally. Um, hard to actually imagine. So if you can picture, have you ever been to the Pacific Ocean um, or you can see that it is there, but there's no way you can sort of picture it all without taking a look at the entire globe itself. You turn it till you can pretty much only see water. That's the Pacific Ocean. So the size of it um, can help us picture how big a mole is. So the Pacific Ocean has about six times 10 to the 20 liters, which would be six times 10 to the 23 milliliters. And there you have it. The Pacific Ocean contains about a mole worth of milliliters of water. So if you're just standing on the edge of the Pacific Ocean and look at like a, 10 drops of water, that's about a milliliter, um, and said, okay, that's one of those milliliters. And there is about a mole of those milliliters in the Pacific Ocean. Pretty big number.